Another very important uh, principle for personal management and learning self-discipline is this, number six, when you work, work. So often people are at work and they're at the uh, drinking fountain or they're looking at the internet or they're calling home, uh, they're chit-chatting with someone, uh, they're maybe reading the newspaper and they shouldn't be. When you work, work, get your work done push other things aside. If you want to read the newspaper or your favorite magazine or you want to talk to the children, you do that after you're done working. So learn the principle of when you are working to work during that time and push out all those distractions. And we live, sociologists tell us, in the day of distractions. There are so many distractions. The cell phone goes off, uh, a new email pops up, you have to go to Facebook. We have all these many things calling and pulling on us. So it's so important to learn this. I like to work early in the morning. That's the way I'm built. And so I go to my desk very early in the morning. I do not answer phones. I do not look at emails. And I get my uh, core jobs done right away in the morning. And then I set a time where I return phone calls and I get back to other people or see people for lunch or deal with whatever distractions or other items of uh, duties I need to do. But when I work, I work and I cut other things out. And then seven, seize small units of time. This is a great principle for busy elders. You have a little 10 minute period here. Maybe there's 20 minutes here before dinner. Uh, maybe you're waiting on someone at the restaurant and they're late. You get those little, little units of time, 10 minutes here, 15 minutes here, 20 minutes here. At the end of the month, you have many hours added up. Now you seize those little units of time and don't stare off into space. You can make a phone call that you need to make as an elder. Maybe you need to check on someone at the hospital by phone or shoot back a couple emails. If you use those times properly, you will save much time and you'll get those jobs done that are blocking you from doing things you uh, feel are more urgent to you or maybe being with your family. I have found this a great principle in my life. I just took 15 minutes at night, just 15 minutes at night before I would go to bed and I decided I wanted to work through all the prophets because I didn't know the prophets very well. So just a little 15 minute period of time over a four year period, I worked with a a key commentary on each of the prophets and worked my way through the prophets. Maybe there's some books you just, you're behind in your reading. What? Have that book with you all the time. You have 10 minutes waiting for the doctor to come or uh, maybe you have an appointment and uh, you've got a little time before that appointment. You pull your book out, start reading. You'll get that book done several months. So learn to be prepared to use those little units of time that are given to you and not just waste them. And then do your most important tasks first. What is it you have to do? Do those first. Don't push them off like the procrastinator does. Learn to do what has to be done first and then follow through in your responsibilities. Nine. Oh. There's nothing that frustrates a body of elders than an elder who doesn't follow through with his responsibilities. Uh, forgets. That's, that's the great excuse. I forgot. Well, it's really no excuse. When you're given a task, think of this. If I don't follow through with this and follow through when I'm supposed to, I'm going to frustrate all my fellow elders. And I'm going to have a bad reputation as a person who's not really very responsible. Uh, don't give him a bigger job because he can't do the little jobs. That's what Jesus said. He said, if you're not little, faithful in little things, how can you be faithful in big things? Perfectly natural logic. And so follow through on your duties, your assignments. When someone asks you to do something, do it quickly. Do it right away. Check it off your list. I have a son-in-law and he... Uh, leads the youth, uh, college and career. And it's so frustrating to him when, when people get jobs or they're, they're going on an outing and people don't follow through with what they said they would do. They don't even show up sometimes. They don't call and say we're not coming. And he's left with all these young people and all these people who say they would help, they don't follow through. Very, very frustrating. It hurts relationships. 
A good leader is a person who follows through with duties, follows through with your word. And then don't be a slave to the phone. And we live in an age, people never had anything like this before, where you have a cell phone, you have a phone, you have the email, you have the Facebook, you have all these voices coming at you, and you have people feeling they have to contact you immediately, and you have to answer immediately. And we become slaves, we even become addicted to the phone. Do not become addicted to the phone. You control your phone. Turn it off when you need to turn it off. We've been at the dinner table with my wife's made a wonderful dinner and people sitting there talking on the phone. Now because I'm a, a, a loving Christian leader, I don't hit them on the head with my Bible. But that's what I feel like doing. They're just so rude. Just They have to talk on the phone. And I know people are just addicted to the phone. When you're studying your Bible, turn that phone off. When you've got tasks to do or jobs to do, turn that phone off. You can return phone calls. If we don't learn to get control of the, of the phone, it controls us. The same thing with your children, with your family. When they're talking to you, you shouldn't be on the phone at the same time. Show them respect. Don't be a slave to the phone. And then plan for rest and exercise and family. If you don't plan this, if you don't look ahead, and do this, it's not going to happen. All these interruptions, and, and if you're disorganized and a procrastinator, you're never done anyway. You're guilty if you go away and do something nice and pleasant. And most of us have jobs that we're at a desk, we sit, we, do, do not, we have cars, we don't walk long distances. But most of us need physical exercise. You have to plan that. Time with the family, time with the children. Many, many Christian families are just passing each other in the dark. And society and all the busyness of society is basically taking them over. It's your job to control that. So plan for rest, plan for exercise, plan for family, and take control of this hyper-busy, manic world we live in today. And then pray about over-busyness and over-commitment. Uh, wherever I go, this is the big problem I hear over and over and over. We're so busy. We're too busy. We're overcommitted. Well, I realize that's the age we live in. Even secular people are, are frustrated with this life of over busyness. I remember I was at a gym. I was visiting my father who lives several thousand miles from me. And I was at this gym and the man next to me was running on a machine. And I was on a machine and we started talking and he said he was a lawyer. And I said, now, What's your biggest frustration as a lawyer? Oh, he sighed. He said, people feel they have access to me 24 hours a day. I, I cannot get away from the phone. If I don't answer immediately, they'll go to another lawyer. He said, I can hardly have time for my family. I have time for this right now. That's the world we live in today. And it's damaging to the spiritual life because this Bible is a big book and you are to master this Bible as an elder. That means time, time to learn the words of God. We're people of the book. So pray about and take strong control as a family over over busyness and over commitments. And then learn to say no, learn to say no. Maybe you should stand in front of a mirror and practice it several times. No, you just cannot say yes to everything. And in fact, it's your capacity to say no to things that gives you the capacity to do the really important things you need to do. You may have to say no to some of those sports. You may have to say no to some of those hobbies you want to do. You just cannot do it all. Uh, maybe you want to read more books or learn something else or take this trip. You have to say no. You have to focus and limit yourself to the task that God has called you to do. So the point is, Organize your life. Take control of your life. And there are many, many techniques you can use to learn. There are, there are good books on this. One thing you can do is go talk to someone who has a well-managed life. Sit down, take that person to lunch. Say, what are some of the keys, some of the ways you manage all the work you have to do? And I know this, if you're an elder, you're a very busy person. You're over busy. In fact, you put your family at risk if you're an elder. So you have to manage all of this busyness. Now, let's continue here. We looked at organize your life, and now is welcome responsibility. 
Now by this I mean not get more work, but sometimes we can do more and at times we are letting things go by uh, because we just don't want to do it. Often you're in an elders meeting and, and uh, there's an assignment, a phone call that needs to be done or someone to be visiting. You see everyone's head goes down. Lord, don't let them see me. Well, you know what? If you're a well-organized person and you've learned to manage your time, you have some self-discipline, you can say, I can do that. I can manage that. And it's, it's an old saying, but it's true. If you want something done, give it to a busy person. They've learned how to manage life and learn, manage responsibility. As you accept responsibility, you accept those assignments, then it forces you into organizing yourself better. Now, sometimes you need to say no. But most of us can learn to be more effective and to do more and to manage time. And then next, hold yourself accountable to someone else. If you're struggling with self-discipline, you're struggling with managing your life, then you have someone hold you accountable. A fellow elder, maybe it's a spouse, or maybe it's a counselor, someone who will help you manage your life and get better organized and learn the skills of self-discipline. So you have time for reading the Bible. You have time to pray. You have time to be with your children and minister to them and have time with the saints and time for study. And like I said, if you have someone that you know who is well managed in life and a disciplined person, tell that person, I want you to teach me some of your skills. How did you learn this? What do you do? I've actually learned a lot in life from asking this question to people. How do you manage your day? How do you manage that huge workload that you have? How is it you have time for reading the Bible and for quiet meditation? How is it you have this? Tell me some of the things you've done. And then G, in our outline here, take care of your body. It's the only one you have. I read that 68% of people say they don't exercise because they lack self-control. In ordering your life, you need enough sleep. You need enough physical exercise. You do need to eat properly. You do need to go to bed at night at a right time. You do need rest. So all these things are needed. Now, here's an interesting thing. As you learn to discipline your body, it often affects the spirit and affects many areas of your life. You see, we are a body and we are a spirit. We are one being. And so there's this marvelous, almost unexplainable uh, interaction between body and spirit and body and, and personal mentality and, and the mind. It's all interrelated. If your body is lazy, if your body is sick, it will affect your work ethic. It will affect your thinking. It will affect uh, what you can get done. It will affect your prayer life. It takes strength to pray, said Hudson Taylor. So remember, you need to discipline your body with proper eating and proper sleep, uh, a proper management of uh, its exercise so you can be strong to do the tasks you need to do. And if you discipline your body, it will go over to disciplining your spirit and your spiritual life. That's what Paul said. He, he says, I, I envision myself as a boxer. I envision myself as a runner and I bring my body under control. And then lastly, seek to be disciplined in every area of your life. Self-discipline, writes Kelly, is essential to success in all areas of life. We need to be a balanced person. We need to be disciplined in our study. We need to be disciplined in our exercise, in our eating, in our sleep, in our relationships with other people. A, a balanced life, not an unbalanced life. Some people love exercise and sports and they, and they can do that all day, but they won't open their Bible. Uh, they don't have time for other people. So, I want to remind you, the Holy Spirit wants to produce the fruit of self-control, self-discipline in your life. It is a requirement of an elder that he be disciplined in his life, his personal life. And that goes right over into our work. So you can pray about this, you can talk to others, you can study more about this, but never let up on this. All of life, you will work at being a Christ-like, spirit-filled, disciplined Christian leader.